Good day. All right. Today we're looking at sketching parabolas using factorization. By the end of this lesson, we're going to be able to identify key features of parabola, turning point, axis of symmetry, x, y intercepts. We're going to be able to sketch parabolas as well by finding x, y intercepts and the turning point. Let's go. So a parabola, it's a graph of a quadratic a relation. Okay, just as a reminder, most basic parabola has a real y equals x squared, but of course, anything that looks like y equals x, ax squared plus bx plus c, it's going to look like a parabola. It's going to look like a parabola. So the turning point of this parabola is a location where it reverses direction. It can be a minimum. A minimum is where it dips down here, it goes to a minimum value here, or a maximum, okay, where it has a maximum point at the top here. We've got uh, a graph of, of a parabola on the right hand side here we can see the turning point here the turning point where it turns back around and on the graph here we have a minimum okay we've got a minimum here the x and y intercepts they're where the graph crosses the x and y axes respectively there will always be only one y intercept just like the highlander there can be only one for our x-intercepts, depending on our discriminant, there are either going to be one, two, or no x-intercepts. For our example here, we've got two x-intercepts, two x-intercepts here. We can get one x-intercept when our graph only just touches, just touches the x-axis here. We can get no real solutions and no x-intercepts if we're somewhere up here. We don't even cross the um, cross the the x-axis at all. Okay, so there's always going to be one y-intercept, but there can be two, one, or no x-intercepts. The axis of symmetry is the vertical line that intersects the turning point. So it will always be equal to x equals something. So we can draw a nice straight vertical line through the turning point and that is our axis, axis of symmetry. Okay, just like it says on the box, it is the axis about which we get some uh, reflective symmetry of our parabola. So it's the same on the left hand side as it is on the right hand side of that line. So for this case here, if this was zero and this is one here, then our axis of symmetry is about point, x equals 0.5, yeah, give or take. All right, let's have a look at some examples identifying key features of these graphs. Let's look at the first graph A here. Here's our first candidate to step up to the mat. We're looking and being asked for, uh, what is the turning point? Is it a maximum? Is it a minimum? So the turning point's nicely, neatly labeled here where it turns around. So we can just copy and paste that directly from the graph and we can see it's a minimum value. So that means, oops, min there, mum. Forgot how to spell minimum there for a second. Uh, look at the uh, second part, axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is, as I said, is if we were drawing a nice straight vertical line, it'll be x equals and it passes through the axis of symmetry, uh, through the uh, turning point rather. The x value for our turning point is 1. So that means our axis of symmetry is x equals 1. Looking at part 3. For this uh, first one for A, we're asked for the x-intercepts. That's where it crosses the x-axis here and here. So therefore, the x-intercepts are going to be uh, negative 1, 0 and 3, 0. And lastly, our y-intercepts, there's only one. There's only one here where it crosses the y-axis. That is x is equal to 0 and y is equal to negative 3. Please, 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 if you are asked for the x-intercept or the y-intercept, these are points. You need to give the coordinates for those points. Please do not give one number. Do not say the x-intercepts are negative 1 and 3. They are not. They are negative 1, 0 and 3, 0. The y-intercept is 0, negative 3. Okay, so give it as, a, as an ordered pair as these coordinates, exactly as I've written them here. Please. B. Let's have a look firstly at the turning point. 
turning point here is right at the top. It's right on that x-axis. So the turning point um, is negative 2, 0 here. Is it a minimum or is it a maximum? Well, it's got a maximum point there, so it is a maximum. A maximum point. Okay, look at, looking at the second one here, axis of symmetry is the vertical line that passes through that turning point. So therefore, it's x equals negative 2 in this case. All right, number three, we're asked for the x-intercepts. Only one x-intercept here, it just touches the line. So the x-intercept is the turning point, negative 2, 0. For last one, the y-intercept here, where it crosses the y-axis, we've got 0, negative 4 for the y-intercept. Now, sketching those parabolas. Any, nothing sketchy about this, I assure you. We've got y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. That's the general form of any parabola. So the first thing we do, the easiest thing, find the y-intercept. Y-intercept is when x equals 0. So you can substitute in x equals 0, find that y-intercept, and you get that nice little number there. Next bit is a little bit trickier. You've got to find the x-intercept or x-intercepts by substituting in y equals 0 then you need to factorise. You need to factorise uh, or use the quadratic equation to solve that quadratic equation for ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. That will give you the, uh, the x-intercept or x-intercepts. Then find the, this, this bit's a little bit more involved, okay? So we should be able to do that solving. That shouldn't be too big a deal. But then what we need to do is find the turning point. Now, the x-coordinate of the turning point is halfway between the x-intercepts. So if the x-intercepts are here at uh, 1, 0, and here at 5, 0, then the x-coordinate of the turning point is halfway in between them directly because it's the axis of symmetry. It's mirroring it. Okay, It's a mirror image. It's the halfway, halfway point. So we can add them together, divide by 2, and that will be the x-coordinate. So the x-coordinate here is 3, x equals 3, for this particular axis of symmetry. So now we've got the x-coordinate, so what? How can we find the turning point? Well, it's got to be on the line, and any point on the line has got to satisfy the equation that we are given to start with. So if we know x equals 3, we substitute in x equals 3 into the equation, into the original equation that we are given, and that will give us the y-coordinate therefore giving us the turning point. We need to then plot the points, join in a nice smooth curve, done. Finito, finish. We have sketched a parabola. Now we can add a couple of little uh, details there to make it look uh, really schmick. Let's have a look at doing a, an example now. So we've got our uh, equation that we need to sketch. y equals x squared minus 6x plus 5. Firstly, so when you're organising your answer, you've got to do each bit individually, organise it, put little little headings, you know, make sure you're nice and neat. So start with the y-intercept. Do a little, little underline there. That's nice, with a little flourish. There we know the x-intercept is when x equals 0. So then we can say, well, y equals 0 squared minus 6 times 0 plus 5. That means y equals 5. Then we can say, therefore, y-intercept is 0, 0,5. Done. We've done that first bit. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Let's do the x-intercept now. x-intercept, nice little underline there for those of you playing at home. y equals 0, where it's stating the requirements, stating the requirement for our x-intercept there. Substitute in 0 equals x squared minus 6x plus 5. Now we do what we have practiced so many times before. Oh, let's factorize this bad boy. AC is equal to 5. B is equal to negative 6. So that means the two numbers that I'm going to need for this section here, they're probably going to be, I don't know, negative 1 and negative, negative uh, 5. So then that makes this x squared minus x minus 5x plus 5. Common factors, x, x minus 1, minus 5, x minus 1. 
So I get x minus 1 times x minus 5. Close that bracket off there. All right. So now, I mean, we apply the null factor law and we get x equals x equals 1 or x equals 5. These are very simple. Those ones are very simple. So x equals 1 or x equals 5. We can say, therefore, um, the x-intercepts are uh, 1, 0 and 5, 0. So we've got uh, four points, three points rather so far. We've got our y-intercept, two x-intercepts here. That's pretty sweet. We just need to find that last point, that turning point. Okay, so we can say here turning point. Another nice little heading there. Okay, the x coordinate is halfway between our x intercepts. So it equals 1 plus 5 over 2, which is equal to 3. That's our x coordinate. Our y coordinate, coordinate is equal to substituting the 3 into our equation. So 3 here, 3 here. So we get 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 5. We get 9 minus 18 plus 5, which is 4. So therefore, turning point is uh, our x-coordinate is, oh, I mean negative 4 there. Whoa, that was a close one. 3, negative 4. That's our turning point. Phew, that's our last point. We just got to now, we just got to plot them. Okay, so when you're thinking about drawing up your axes and things like that, think about going one either side of your largest and smallest values. So if we look at our x coordinates, and we look at our y coordinates, our x coordinates go from 0 to 5. So we go maybe from negative 1 to 6, one buffer from either side. Our, uh, our y coordinates go from negative 4 to positive 5, so buffer, buffer those ones out as well. So we go from negative 5 to positive 6. Okay, so if we have a look here, we can make um, uh, this our x, our y axis here. Okay, uh, I regret everything. I regret not including a ruler. You better rule your lines on this one, you better rule your lines. So here, um, then if we've got negative 6, sorry, negative 5 down the bottom, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, that would make this here the x-axis. Also use a ruler, definitely. All right, so we can label on here now, negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then down here, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative four and look at one two three four five all right let's plot these points so plotting the points first the y-intercept is here at zero five label it label it zero five it's one of our points that we've been given x-intercept is one zero that's here label it label it one zero uh, we've got our other x-intercept here at 5, 0, label it, 5, 0. And then we've got our turning point at 3, negative 4. Here it is, 3, negative 4, label it there. Okay, so label all of your points. Now comes the tricky part, draw them all, nice smooth line, a nice smooth line. So if we're coming down here, nice smooth curve, down to the turning point and then back up as smooth as you can like that okay nice smooth try and do it as smooth as and neat as you can now I told you I'd be adding a couple of little flourishes here we've got to add these little flourishes this is going to be the cherry on the cake it's going to make you make your parabola look perfect because because right there you've got you know you've got a pretty good pretty good parabola a couple of little, little add additions you can make add some arrows onto the ends of your uh, of your of your graph there add some arrows onto the end of your graph so you know making making sure that you tell your audience hey you know this is a parabola it continues it's continuing up past where I've 
where I've drawn it. Also, really, really cool to label it with the equation you were given right at the start. Y equals uh, x squared minus 6x uh, plus 5. It's akin to giving your graph a title. You're saying, this is what my graph is of. So, what do we learn today? We learned all about parabolas. We learned how to identify the x-intercepts, the y-intercepts, turning point, axis of symmetry. We learned how to identify those. We've learned how to sketch our graphs by finding the y-intercept, then finding the x-intercepts, then finding the turning point, and then you know doing a nice, uh, a nice smooth curve to join all of those uh, points together. Okay.